Hello, this is Dr. Ogilvie speaking. Um, just wanted to uh, have you join me on Reflecting on Histology, the course that you're about ready to complete when you finish the final exam. I call this uh, short video Reflections rather than Review. It take hours to review all that you have learned during the semester. Supposedly that's what you will be doing. But I thought you might want to listen and view a couple frames from a promotional video. Maybe many of you have viewed this video, maybe not. So I'm going to begin that way and uh, I'm going to bring this to the foreground. And this is the video, so I'm going to play the first frame for you. Are you looking for a histology course that does not require class attendance or the use of a microscope? If so, then Bio J530 Histology, a distributed learning course, is the one for you. Histology. So, <clears throat> this is the course that you've been taking. Now, I'm going to uh, proceed to the structure function unit frame of this video, which will remind you of three of the important structure function units you have learned in this course. The microscopic architecture of the human body is designed so that each organ has structure function units. That is, structures designed to carry out the primary function of that organ. Three examples are the osteones of your bones, without which you cannot stand up. The alveoli of the lung, without which you cannot breathe. And the nephron of the kidney, without which you would not be able to rid your body of waste products. So those are the uh, three of the structure function units. Now as you reflect on histology, think about all the structure function units that you have learned in this course. Now I'm going to proceed to another frame, and this would be the uh, <coughs> relevance of histology to professions. Uh, many taking this course are pre-dead and pre-med. However, there is a spectrum of other majors that have taken the course. So let's take a moment and listen to this slide or this uh, segment. Knowledge of histology is relevant to many undergraduate and graduate programs. For example, for physicians, dentists, nurses, physical therapists, bioengineers, anthropologists and archaeologists. Histology is basic to all of the health science professions. The re so uh, now we will proceed to the course topics where uh, you studied the, the different organs. Now I want you to reflect on those or reflect on those organs as to uh, put them in functional categories. So let's listen to this segment. Topics you will engage to learn in this course are first, the basic tissues of which organs are constructed. Then organs that protect us from germs like lymph nodes, spleen, bone marrow, and skin. Organs that exchange gas so we can breathe and rid our bodies of the byproducts of metabolism, the lung and the kidney. Organs that digest and process the food we take in, the esophagus, stomach, intestines, pancreas, and salivary glands. Organs that control the behavior of other organs, the adrenal glands, thyroid, and pituitary gland. And finally, organs that make it possible to reproduce humans, the ovary, uterus, and testis. You have been exposed to and have learned the microscopic architecture and function of all those organs. Now is the time to reflect on what you have learned and put it all together. Each of those organs has a specific cell type. Here is the word list that you can have available as you take the final exam. You can actually have it available for parts A, B, and C, but especially it will be necessary for part C. All the answers that you type in on part C will be found here and you are expected to spell uh, your answers correctly. So whether it be cell types, or the uh, four basic tissues and the specialized connective tissue or the organs. Uh, this would be a handy 
uh, document to have available. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to review a, a few virtual slides and, and kind of um, talk about the categories and, uh, and, and mention some of the functional correlates. But uh, perhaps there will be some uh, information or images that you have not seen or thought about and give you a better insight into what you've learned. So I'm going to pause this while I prepare that. Here is a section through thick skin. And as you will probably recall, you can find all the basic tissues, that is the four basic tissues, epithelium, connective tissue, muscle and nerve, and skin. As we look at this specimen, you see the surface is covered with epidermis, and of course this is stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. Just below the surface in the papillary layer is loose connective tissue, and then dense irregular connective tissue underneath that in the reticular layer of the epidermis. And then the hypodermis, or the subcutaneous tissue, which has adipose tissue, uh, bundles of adipose tissue that are separated by strong uh, uh, web of dense collagenous connective tissue. Now looking at this at a little higher magnification, you can now see the layers of the epidermis, and you've learned all these layers. And, and also, you see the loose connective tissue below the skin, and of course, this is from the sole of a foot. And so the non-living the, uh, non portion, the stratified, stratified corneum, is very thick. As we move down, you see the dense irregular connective tissue, and then you begin to see blood vessels. Of course, just in the papillary layer, you will find uh, capillaries, very tiny vessels that range from 5 to 8 uh, microns in diameter. And then down here, we can begin to see some uh, other vessels. For example, a very tiny arteriole here and a venule over here, just one layer of endothelial cells. And as we move down further, you will find larger vessels. Here's a larger arteriole. Actually, it's on the border of a, a medium artery, but it only has about five to six layers of smooth muscle around it. And then close by, you see a bundle, a fascicle of nerve fibers, a duct of a salivary or a, a sweat gland, and then the secretory cells of a sweat gland. And then the very intense uh, fibers here that stain intense eosinophilic or acidophilic are elastic fibers. So here you have uh, nerve, muscle, epithelium, and connective tissue, and of course the adipose tissue. Now I'm going to change this specimen now. That's basically your four basic tissues, and you should uh, be familiar with those and be able to find them in all uh, organs. If we switch to the liver, for example, here. Here is a liver that's stained with hematoxin eosin, but also stained with silver, so that it highlights the fine reticular fibers that form the framework of this organ. This is a solid organ. It has no cortex and medulla. All of the cells in here, the liver or the hepatocytes, uh, between the blood vessels, and here are some red blood cells, uh, are epithelial cells. And uh, But the Remarkable thing about this specimen I'd like to point out are the reticular fibers. You see they lie in the space of uh, DISI, and that's between uh, the endothelium and the hepatocyte. You see how that forms a very complete framework. So the liver, a solid organ, remember it has the uh, bile ducts and the uh, arterioles and the uh, venules in the portal areas. So uh, let's move to an organ that has a cortex and medulla, the kidney. Here you see the, you can see the difference in staining of the medulla and the cortex. Of course, you know you're in the cortex and the kidney when you see the glomeruli. So here are some glomeruli. Remember, associated with glomeruli 
or the distal tubule that touches it at one point. And when you move around, you may be lucky, as we are. We actually see two macula dens densi here, a macula densa here and a macula densa here. And then you can see uh, here uh, two glomeruli. And here is the beginning of a proximal convoluted tubule. So this would be the vascular pole, and this would be the urinary pole. Very fortunate finding here. So uh, again, a solid organ with a cortex and medulla. Now I'm going to pause this for a moment uh, while I switch specimens. So now we shift to a uh, hollow organ. Remember the hollow organs are of two varieties. The ones that have three layers and ones that have four layers. And all the cardiovascular organs have three layers, and it's enema, median, adventitia. Or in the heart, it's endocardium, myocardium, and epicardium. So if we look at this one, this is stained with Verhoff van Giesen stain. And you see the collagen out here in the abent tissue stains uh, reddish. And there's a, there's a nerve fascicle here. But look at the multiple layers, nearly 70 layers of elastic membranes in between which are smooth muscle, and then you have the enema, which is very thin. So uh, again, just to remind you of the three-layered um, hollow organs. And in contrast, this is a large vein, such as the vena cava. Recall that the vena cava has bundles of smooth muscle in its adventitia running longitudinally. And again, this is showing, shows the collagen between the muscle bundles. Now I'm going to pause this Why? Uh, well, I guess I can go to the next one, which is the ilium, uh, excuse me, the jejunum. And this is, again, a hollow organ with four layers. And the four layers here are the mucosa, and then the uh, submucosa, muscularis externa, and then on the surface would be a external surface, a serosa. So um, there you have the difference. You notice the, the tremendous increase in surface area. These are the plica circularis. The core of these is the submucosa. And of course, these are the villi extending. And here are the intestinal glands. You will possibly, hopefully, recall the, the specific cell types that are present here, say the panis cells, the fact that in those Intestinal glands is where you find mitosis, and there are a few mitotic figures here. So I'm going to pause this now while I prepare the next uh, specimen to view. So now we have another organ that has a cortex and medulla, a lymph node. Remember that lymph nodes have nodules, but all the nodules in the cortex, whereas in the spleen, the nodules, the lymphatic nodules, are scattered throughout the spleen, and they form the white pulp. But here in this lymph node, you have the cortex. And remember, you have the deep cortex with where T lymphocytes are. And then you have the medulla, where you have the medullary cords, and then the medullary sinuses that are full of lymphocytes and other cell types generated here. And uh, recall the afferent uh, lymphatic vessels and the efferent ones. So I'm going to pause this a moment. Then this is a specimen of uh, prostate. This I just put this here to remind you of very specialized structures, such as the corpus arenacea or the uh, con concretions that are present in the prostate that help identify it as the prostate gland. So that's just to remind you of the special structures that you've learned during this course.